Hello friends, it's Zoe and welcome to today's bullet journaling video. Today I'll be flipping through my 2023 bullet journal. But first of all, I want to thank you guys for all the love on my last video. I think it became like my third most watched video on my channel, which is an awesome way to start the new year. Today's video is actually my 100th video on this channel. So even though I don't normally do flip throughs, I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you my progress over the last year and talk a bit about my bullet journaling journey. So I'll be yapping for the next 10 minutes, so I hope you enjoy and get some inspiration for your journal as well. I personally love watching flip throughs, there's just something so satisfying about them. So let's go! This next page is like the top 10 playlist spread and this is definitely like one of my favorites of the entire journal. It just has like my top 10 favorite songs of each month and then I also wrote down like my Spotify wrapped stats next to all that. In 2023, I uploaded like 24 videos and found a lot of new YouTubers to watch, so that was cool. And we're going to start get getting into the first monthly spread, which was the like winter sunrise theme of January. Um, as you'll see, when I flip through, like there's gonna be a lot of failed habits and blank spreads, but that's just being transparent, you know, like not every spread is going to be perfect or um, complete and that's fine, like we're all human. So yeah, oh, February was a good month for my theme. Yep, you can see the empty spread there. <laughs> But yeah, this is a fun theme of just like architectural sketches with my red pen. This is when I was really deep into my architectural internship. So most days I just wrote down like six to eight, nine to six p.m. was working and didn't really have much to do on my to-do list because I would just be working. This meal plan was pretty helpful in you know keeping track of what I ate. Um, oh, this was one of my favorite themes. The cherry blossom theme at the end of March. I actually traveled to Japan with my family and was very excited for the cherry blossom season so I kind of dedicated the whole month to that and I think this like pink color was really pretty and fun to draw so March was definitely one of my favorite themes of the year and you'll see me flip through it. Yeah this is like my Japan spread so kind of just wrote down everything we did each day in Japan really simply just with my black pen because I was on vacation I didn't have too much time to journal and this is when I started my um, study abroad in Korea which is why I didn't upload any um, bullet journaling plan with me setups just because I couldn't really film like in my hotel room but I bought a lot of stickers in Korea, so I kind of just used them all up in my um, bullet journal. I tried to keep in touch with a lot of people, even though I was abroad. But yeah, these these spreads were pretty minimal. I didn't do too much. Um, I didn't really do like a theme. I just kind of wanted to use all the stickers that I was buying. So I was really trying not to be a sticker hoarder as I normally am and just go ham with the stickers <laughs> so that was really fun and the colors I chose for each month still kind of like I guess when you don't have a theme it's nice to have like a color palette at least and the colors that I chose are very like cheerful and colorful so I liked I like that a lot um, and then here comes July I think Oh, June. So yeah, this was the end of my uh, Korea, study, Korea study abroad and I also spent some time in Taiwan, which this is like one of my favorite spreads as well, like my two weeks in Taipei spreads. I really enjoyed like the little doodles that I did of like the landmarks that we saw in Taipei, which was really fun. And then this page was like a summer overview spread so I think I had like 14 weeks of summer and I was really ambitious and wanted to get done like with all the 
videos and portfolio things, but yeah, that obviously didn't end up happening, but that's okay. Still working on it. I actually really liked these summer spreads too. I think the bright blue and like the ombre lettering effect was really fun to do. And I also used the stickers from the same artist, so that kind of like tied the theme together, which was fun. Um, and I wrote down like a lot of what I did each day since it was summer, like I don't really have homework, so I would just write what I did that day and like underline the main events. And this August thing is really fun using crayons. I've never used crayons before in my bullet journal, but I think it added like a really nice touch of like nostalgia or like childhood vibes. I don't know, crayons always just make me think of like elementary school or like when you're a kid and you go to a restaurant and they give you like crayons so you can like doodle on their like coloring page that they give you or something. So that was very fun. Um, and then we think we're heading towards September now. Oh yeah, just a totally blank spread. I don't remember what I was saving that for, but September, that's when I started to do the bullet journaling plan with me is too. A very bright um, color theme, trying to stay motivated for the school year, starting my fifth year of architecture school in college. And yeah, it was a very busy, busy quarter. So I had a lot of filled out spreads, you know, coming back to school after studying abroad, you wanted to catch up with all your friends and also you had a lot of homework. So lots to keep track of. October was fun, a classic, love a classic Halloween theme. Um, my friend gave me like this pack of stickers that just fit so well. Oh, my failed Inktober, yep. That's great. <laughs> um, yeah, that was funny. I did not do Inktober still. Still haven't done Inktober any, any time. But yeah, so the weekly spreads were like super simple. I ended up doing like this uh, four days per page, like almost the entire year, just cause it was like very simple and it was really satisfying to do each week. Um, and it gave enough space for all my to-do lists. This November theme was really fun to do. I really liked the color palette. I think it was something I'd never done before, so that was fun. Um, yeah, and it was super easy doodles to draw and it still like looked really cohesive, so that was pretty. And then I think we're heading into December. Oh, not yet. See, very empty, empty spreads. That was during finals week, so I just kind of put my head down and worked instead of worked on my working on my bujo. Um, but yeah, December, getting towards the end of the bullet journal now. I really like this theme as well. Just super simple triangles, basically, on every page, um, and just using all the different shades of green was fun. This winter break spread was really cool too because I did a Dutch door. Um, and like it ended with the 31st, which was very practical and perfect. And yeah, with the leftover pages of my bullet journal, I had like 40 leftover pages. So I ended up doing like a 2023 recap um, series of pages where I have my accomplishments, highs and lows of the year. And since I traveled a lot this year, I wanted to put in a little map and like color in all the places I went to. I also went to like 10 concerts, a couple of those were free concerts, but they still count. And then with the leftover pages, I actually printed out like almost 200 pictures and just pasted them in my bullet journal and made really cute spreads. Um, I didn't uh, finish all of them at the time I was filming it, but it's like almost like a scrapbook at the end of the journal, which I think is really fun. and. Um, a good way to like go through your camera roll and pick out the best photos and I just know that like when I look back at my bullet journal I'll definitely be looking at the pictures and like maybe trying to match up the days from the pictures from the days like that I wrote in my bullet journal so yeah super fun that's what I would do with the leftover pages because I know that some people 
want to start a new journal at the beginning of each year, but then they might feel like, oh, they wasted the last pages of their other journal. So this is a good way to use them up. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This is towards the end of the journal. Um, 2023 was a good bullet journaling year. Uh, and I hope 2024 is also even better. So I appreciate you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.